Hi, this is Amato. In this video I will show you absolutely brilliant chess game. That is the game between Mikhail Tal and a known player that was played in Soviet Union in 1963. In this game Tal had white pieces and he started with e4. Black played c5, knight to f3, d6, so we have Sicilian defense. d4, pawn takes pawn, knight takes on d4, knight to f6, attacking pawn on e4, knight to c3, defending, and now a6, Sicilian Nidorf. Bishop to g5, and e6 was played to avoid doubling of pawns, if bishop takes now, then a queen takes, so of course Tal would not take, he played f4, b5, black is expanding on queen side, e5, knight can't move, it can, but then queen is going to be lost, so this is a relative pin, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight still can't move, but black found this very good move, queen to c7, and if pawn takes knight, then queen to e5 check. And after, for example, bishop to e2, queen takes on g5, and black is doing well. So in this position, instead of taking knight, Tal played queen to e2, knight from f to d7, and Tal castled. And notice that he left pawn on e5 to be taken for free. Hmm, is it really for free? What do you think? Should black take pawn? Is it better to take pawn with knight or queen or maybe not to take it at all? What would you do if you had black pieces? Black played bishop to b7. But you would like to know what would happen if queen takes pawn. Okay, if queen takes pawn, then queen takes queen. Knight takes queen, knight from d takes on b5, threat is checkmate. And if f6 to prevent checkmate, knight to c7, forking king and rook, and white is winning. Okay, so let's go back. What about knight takes on e5? If knight takes, then knight from d takes on b5 attacking queen, pawn takes knight, Knight takes on b5, attacking queen, and threat is still, the rook is coming to d8, so this is also winning for white. So, black made a good decision, he played bishop to b7. And now, we have reached critical position of the game. It is tall to move, and to play a killer move. Please don't pause. Because this is extremely difficult to find. And, uh, yeah, so don't pause, just watch it. Tal captured only six. And, you know, black did not expect this. Of course, black captured knight. And, looks, he looks alright. Queen to g4 attacking pawn on a6. And now black was confused with the whole thing. And he didn't find the best move in this situation. He played queen to b6 and that looks like a very logical move. And it is winning in all variation except one. But let's just go back. He didn't want to take pawn on e5. He was worried about rook coming to e1. Okay, let's check this variation. This would be still the best, but playing against Tal, he thought this is not a safe move. So if he takes, then bishop to d3, knight to f6, bishop takes knight, queen takes rook to e1. Yes, white is attacking, but black has more chances than in the other variation, but you know, it's hard to, against style, you don't know what to expect. So, queen to b6, which looks like logical move was played. And it is good except for one move. And Tal found that one. Rook to d6. Black didn't see this coming because he thought that d6 was protected by bishop. 
Well, in a way it is. <laughs> Black captured rook. And now queen takes on e6. This is check. And black has only one square, which is good. The king to f8. And now another brilliant move. Absolutely brilliant. Bishop to c4. Queen is coming to f7. Checkmate. Of course, black captured bishop. Why white sacrificed bishop? To make room for his rook on f1. So rook to f1. This is check. Knight to f6. And another brilliant move. Rook takes. This is check. Black must capture with pawn. And it is white to move. And to give checkmate. Can you see it? It is bishop to h6. Checkmate. What a brilliant attack. Tal produced one magic trick after another. Some people say that he attacked like a maniac. What do you think? Is he a magician or attacking maniac? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.